we also all know. I'll make my own decisions. What a stupid thing to say. Lord, I need you every day. We also all know that adultery is not okay. Exodus 20, 14 says, you shall not commit adultery. Jesus expounds on this. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Now, if your right eye is causing you to sin, tear it out and throw it away from you. For it's better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand is causing you to sin, cut it off and throw it away from you. For it's better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. Lust is a sneaky thing. It is a slippery slope to even toe the line like Jesus refers to. Why are we interested in checking someone out other than our spouses anyway? Do we think we're missing out on something? And if you're in a relationship before marriage and you're out on a date with someone and they're checking someone out, don't you feel super disrespected? I'd get up and leave. But come on, tear out my eye, cut off my right hand? Isn't that a little bit extreme? If we're entangled in sin, we are being controlled. The Bible app that I volunteer for is filled with requests, regularly filled with requests for help with sin addiction. I can't tell you how many people realize that they're enslaved to their own desires, to doing things that they are humiliated to even admit that they're doing. Here's my question to them and you, and for that matter, me. What lengths are you willing to go to to not be controlled by sin? I'm not saying that if you have a drug addiction that you cut off your nose so there's no chance that you're going to snort a drug again. Nor am I suggesting that if you have a, what we're calling, corn addiction, you know what I'm talking about, that you literally pluck your eyes out. I'm also not saying that if you have a sugar addiction to super glue your mouth shut. This is what I am saying. What are you willing to give up to learn how to be in control of yourself? Are you willing to give up social media until you can control yourself around all the ideology rhetoric and aren't angry any longer? Are you willing to get off the internet for a long time if you have a corn addiction? Are you willing to sit by yourself at lunch and read the Bible instead of flirting with that cute guy at work when you're in a committed relationship or a marriage? Are you willing to turn the TV off if you can't stop binge watching gory crime shows? I gave up Facebook more than a decade ago because I was an angry individual when I was on Facebook. I gave up movies, 
years ago that had graphic love scenes in them because I was having a hard time in my marriage and I didn't want it to be an escape or a fantasy realm for me to imagine having a better relationship. And I gave up secular music many years ago because I was listening to the lyrics and it was causing me to stumble in my Christian relationships. I eat pretty healthy due to decades of being an American and eating over-processed food. Now my system is messed up. So I gave up processed food and everything a really, really long time ago, close to a decade ago. But my old lady hormones have been trying to take charge of my eating habits over the past six months. Nabisco had to go and make gluten-free Oreos. I know it's not their fault. But what am I willing to do about it? I'm willing to give up processed sugar again. Oreos taste good. Actually, the gluten-free ones taste really good. I shouldn't be promoting those. But if we're addicted to something... Or if we're being caused to stray from something, we're supposed to be stewards of our body. And the Oreos are causing me to stray from my goals about health and how God actually wants me to treat my body. So I'm willing to give up the Oreos again. So I'm willing to give it up because I don't want to be a slave to gluttony and sugar addiction like I was in my younger years. God looks at the intent of our hearts, not the fibs and excuses that we tell ourselves to make ourselves feel better for bad behavior. Christians have to be on guard to watering down intentions. We all know how easy it is to lie to ourselves. But God isn't fooled. And as always, thank you so much for being here today. We were made Make to sure love. to we hit the subscribe button right the there and click here. the bell the so you get notifications. Hit that like button for me too. And we I will to show see you next time. Christ. We know this Fair is enough. why we're here. This is why he gave us life. So let his love shine through in everything we do. It's all for love.